it seems hard to believe that uh, your show could have been uh, any more, and your act could have been any more polished than it already was. Just uh, the classy recording of Walk On By and the perfect background vocals. And Well, uh, but it's uh, quite a bit of difference between uh, studio recording and live shows. And Presentation. I, I know the, the recordings themselves were professional, but but we did, we needed the polish and professionalism that Gene Nash uh, came up with for the show. And uh, now I think we're probably going to step way back in time to around uh, 1953, uh, when you became, as far as I know, the only country artist to have ever opened up uh, for Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> yeah. And uh, would you mind telling us how that came to be? Well, when I when I got to Korea uh, in 1953... I uh, I wrote home. I had a good guitar. I had an electric guitar at home, but I didn't want to have it shipped halfway around the world uh, with the possibility of getting it broken up or destroyed or stolen. So I wrote to my mother and asked her to look in the Sears Roebuck catalog and find an inexpensive guitar and buy it, and I'd pay for it and send it to me. So she found a guitar that back then it only cost thirty about thirty four dollars and shipped it to me. So I had a guitar with me over there. And because I would sit around and sing songs, everybody in our little unit knew that I liked to sing. And so uh, I one day I got a visit from the assistant regimental commander. Uh, he was a lieutenant colonel, or light colonel, we called it. Uh, he came down and asked if I would open a, do about a 15-minute segment on a USO show that was coming in. And I said, well, yes, sir, I'll do that. But he said, I said, uh, who's coming in on the USO show? And he said, Marilyn Monroe. I said, you got to be kidding me. You want me to go out there and open a show in front of uh, 30,000 sex star GIs that are waiting for Marilyn Monroe to come on stage? <laughs> <laughs> but it worked out very well. They were very kind to me and got a really good response. And that, that's when I became, the, I think, the only country act to ever open for Marilyn Monroe. Wow, what a fabulous story! It it was. It was really it was really fun. And you mind if we jump back now to the present? All right. I I think I'll ask you if it's all right how you feel about the state of today's country music as far as the modernization and sort of the elimination of traditional elements. And well, I I think you know what my answer is going to be. It, it, the only thing that you might not know is how I'm going to phrase it. Uh, you might know a, a country comedy duo called the Giesens Law Brothers. Yes. They're very funny and very sharp, very intelligent, and they say, well, it's it's not modern country music. is not country. It's just bad rock and roll. Yes. Uh, now, I'm not blaming the performers, because the performers, in in their desire to perform music, are no different from the way I was 52 years ago. I wanted to sing songs for a living. Oh, no, they do the best they can. They're doing the best they can. There are a lot of good voices, and they're doing all they can do within the framework of the requirements of the people who produce and sell the records. And they won't let them, in most cases, do a traditional classic country song the way we did them uh, 45, 50 years ago. And to me, it's become uh, sort of clear again and again that they have some sort of prescription uh, of what, of the way they think records should be made and what type uh, the public's going to buy. Yeah, and and they and they're not always right. You know, Willie Nelson got fed up with it. He he got sick of of the attitude of the recording companies in Nashville, so he left Nashville, went to Austin, Texas, let his hair grow, and started doing his own thing. And he's had a fantastic career not thanks to the recording companies, but thanks to his own perseverance and his own talent. And I, the, the main objection is that they, they're not producing the records like they used to. You can't understand the words. No uh, melody, really. No melody to it. Most of the time, no coherent story uh, line involved. There's no uniqueness either. No uniqueness. All of them sound alike. Uh, basically, not all of them, but at least 50% of the new artists sound like you took George Jones and Merle Haggard and put them in a blender, and that's what you come up with. Yeah. Uh, and, and here again, I don't blame the artists because they're just doing what the recording companies want them to do. And, uh, well, 
I sort of started this radio program here because uh, there was no traditional country music on the radio here. Only they they only play what they call classic country music uh, on really Sunday mornings on yep. the country radio stations here, and even that that's not really traditional at all. Most of it's from the early '80s or late yeah. '70s. Yeah, and. Uh, so I really appreciate you uh, coming here on my program, uh, Leroy. Well, you're a true legend. I, I'd like to ask you, uh, what are your plans for the future? More of the same. I've, I've been fortunate enough to do about everything there is to do in in country music, uh, television, radio, fairs, rodeos, uh, private functions, corporate stuff, Las Vegas. I've done a little bit of everything, so really there uh no new frontiers to conquer so i guess my answer to that question would be just more of the same and that's what we do uh however our marketing of our live country music shows has changed a little bit in the last 20 years uh, it wasn't planned it just spontaneously evolved uh, we would play a show someplace at a celebration or a county fair or a state fair and they would like what we did so they'd bring us back the second year sometime for a third year and then they would say, well, we can't bring you back forever. What can we do different next year? So Gladys, my wife, put together what she calls Country Gold Tour. And that's a, a package show of classic country performers that have had million-seller records, but not necessarily have we been in the charts in the last 10, 15 years. Sure, like uh, Jim the, Ed Brown, the, Helen Cornelius. Yeah, but the fan base is still there. So... Uh, Gladys now on on the roster has about 25 different names that she pulls from, and she'll put together uh, these package shows. It's called Country Girl Tour. I open the show, and I MC the rest of the show after I finish my part of the show, and she puts them all together. She does all the negotiations. She makes the hotel reservations, the airline I know she does a fabulous job. I've seen the promotional materials yep. that she sent me, and uh, thank her very much for me, please, for helping me set up this radio interview. Yeah, well, I will, and and we have the best backup band in the United States. There are a lot of good bands, but nobody can do what my band does. They're they're really professional, and they they do their homework. So when we put together one of these package shows, in many cases, and, and I'm not blowing smoke, in many cases, my band does a better job backing up the acts than their own band do. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, and we've had we've had these country gold tour packages in about 24 states and about. Four foreign countries. Uh, I know you were recently up uh, right above us here in New Hampshire and Maine, uh, playing a state yes. fair. We were in. We were. It was a county fair in county Act, fair. Acton, Maine. We were up there this past summer. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to make it up there. I bet it was a fabulous show. Well, it's a good show. It's a, it's a, it's not a very big fair. It's just a small county fair. But but we play all sizes of shows from the small county fairs clear on up to the big. Uh, state fairs, uh, like this year we had country gold shows at the Missouri State Fair, Iowa State Fair, uh, Kentucky, uh, Florida, Utah State Fair, and a bunch of other county fairs. So we, we've scattered these shows all over the country. Well, uh, Leroy, once again, thank you so much for appearing on my program. You're a true legend, and uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Paul. I appreciate what you're doing up there. Well, thank you, and I think we're going to listen to a little bit of, well, actually the entire... Uh, auctioneer. Alrighty.